All right, what is up, Utah fans? This is Joseph back with the Utah Utes Football Digest, and we are continuing our series breaking down the different positions for the Utah football team heading into the spring football game. Super exciting. Today, we are going to be talking about the wide receiver room, one of the most roster spots consumed at this position, which is always how it'll be with receiver, but it'll be a lot of different players to go through and a ton of fun. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to break them down. Uh, if you guys haven't watched the other videos in the series, remember we're looking at who are potential stars, uh, which spoiler alert, there's actually no, or not potential stars. It's bona fide stars guys. I'm like very confident will be big time playmakers. There's no guarantees in this position group, but I do believe there's a lot of guys that have that upside and that potential. So I'm excited about this group, but there will be no stars in this video. There will be a couple starters. There will be a bunch of potential starters and there's going to be a, a good amount of solid depth, good amount of deep depth. We're going to dive in. We're going to go through them all. We're going to have a ton of fun. And, um, before we dive in, guys, make sure you guys like the video, smash the like button. Also, comment as we go through, guys. Do you agree with who I have as stars, potential starters, you know, uh, starters, deep depth, solid depth? I want to know your opinion and, and if there's anything I'm missing on any of these guys. Because, you know, even if it's not for me, other people could be looking in the comments and see your info about a specific player. And it could make them more informed going into the spring game. So don't feel like I don't want to hear what you guys have to say. And before we dive in, we're going to be doing these videos for a couple of weeks coming up here, just to every position group heading into the spring game. So make sure you guys subscribe. And on that note, let's go ahead and dive in and go Utes. All right, guys. And here we go. The wide receiver room for Utah. We are going to start with Tayshawn Lyons. Uh, Tayshawn Lyons is a guy that transferred here from Washington. Uh, number zero, he'll be on the field. A guy a ton of people are excited about, a four-star prospect coming out, and actually a four-star transfer as well when he came to Utah. Uh, so a guy that just, it, you know, the the whole switch up at Washington didn't work out for him, and so we decided to come to Utah, and a guy that Utah was already heavily in on. He is a guy I have listed as a potential starter. Still very young, extremely talented, and then a guy that I would not be shocked at all if he were to carve out a spot for himself in this offense. Like I said, though, potential starter. I think there's so much damn talent in this receiver room that you don't know exactly how it's going to shake up. Also, don't forget, there's going to be a lot of tight ends on the field. This is probably two, maybe three solid receiver spots. And I think we got basically two of those spots locked up and then some sort of rotation of other players is going to come in and I would look at the potential starters in that frame of light. So the next guy we have is Dorian Singer and Dorian Singer. If you guys aren't super familiar with him last year was at USC, not a great year. It wasn't like he played terribly. It was just such a crowded offense with so much receiver talent that it was hard to for the team to give him as many opportunities as he deserves. He's going to be number three on the field for Utah this year. And he is a starter for me. I At Arizona, you know, the year before last year, he was such a stud and I wanted him so bad, uh, you know, heading into 2023. We were not able to get him, but we got him this year. He will be a bona fide starter. He is a beast. And I, I think he has that star potential, but I'm going to label him as a starter because he did have a bit of a down year. But that's Dorian Singer, straight beast. Now we've got Munir McLean. And if you guys don't know already, Munir McLean is a guy I am very high on. I think he's extremely talented and had our highest yards per route run uh, on the team, I believe. And one of the highest yards per route run in the country, a big play threat on any given play. Munir McLean's very good. I am going to have him as a potential starter. And the reason with that is he was not a bona fide starter last year, and I thought he was very good last year. So I, it seems like behind the scenes, he still has some stuff to prove. He is a guy, probably my favorite out of the potential starter group to get that you know, get in that rotation of receivers that are hitting the field. I, I'd be shocked if he didn't get a, a good up, uptick in playing time this year. Uh, then we got Micah Pittman, another guy that I've got labeled as a potential starter. Um, with Micah Pittman, a lot of hype when he came in from Florida State. You know, 
uh, previously with Oregon as well. A lot of hype when he came in. We were excited about him. He played a few games last year. Did not look good. I'm just being real about it. He did not look good. Uh, I still do think he, from what I understand, the injury was nagging at him a little bit. And maybe he's all healed up ready to go and will have a huge comeback this year. So potential starter for Micah Pittman. Uh, then we got Daedron Zipper. Daedron Zipper, I've got him as solid depth. So he's a guy, uh, been in the system, I believe. Uh, yeah, he, he has a year in the system, uh, was a really good looking prospect coming out and a guy I was super excited about. Very fast, very quick, very physical. And with a year in the system, I think if we do need him to come out and fill, and fill in for some depth, it's not the worst thing in the world. Now we've got Money Parks. So Money Parks is a guy, 5'10", 175, has been a consistent starter for Utah for multiple multiple years. Had a rough year last year. That was not a good year for Money Parks. But a lot of that can probably be blamed on the quarterback situation. You know, as we got deeper into the year, I think it became more and more glaringly obvious how much of a problem the quarterback situation was for this offense. So that's Money Parks. I've got him as a bona fide starter. I do think he's got to watch his back, though. There's a lot of talent um, coming up behind him that wants that spot. Uh, Sydney and Banasaur. Sydney and Banasaur. Big, big guy, big physical receiver, ton of talent, ton of athleticism, uh, 6'5", 209, number 12 on the field. Uh, Sydney is a guy that's been in the offense for a couple years now, should have his feet under him. I've got him listed as solid depth. I don't see him fighting for a solid starting spot this year, but I do think if needed, if something happens and we need this guy to come in and, and compete for a spot, I don't think, or, you know, fill in for a couple of reps here and there or a game. I don't think it's the worst thing, right? I think he was a guy with a good amount of hype coming out and he should be ready to come in for a game or two if needed. Now we've got David Washington, David Washington going to be number 18. He is a freshman out of Las Vegas, Nevada, four-star prospect. Um, so a lot of hype coming out and, and good tape for sure. Good tape. Uh, a guy that I have listed as solid depth. A guy you don't want to need, like if, if he has to hit the field at any given point for a long stretch, that might not be a good thing. But if he does need a spot field here and there, um, that's not the worst thing in the world. David Washington, he's just very young. We don't know what we're going to be getting. And then a fun one here, guys, Luca Calderella. Now, Luca Calderella got in quite a bit last year. Again, it was a pretty depleted wide receiver room at times last year. And there's a ton of talent to compete with this year. But I do have Luca as a potential starter. Now, I, I do think that with how much time they gave him last year, you've got to imagine there's a, um, a good amount of, you know, I don't know what you'd call it, but the coaches have some faith in the kid and they think he could be something. So that's how I feel about him. I like him. He did not look bad last year. I don't know what his ceiling is, but I think he could carve out some sort of role for himself. So I have him as a potential starter. Then we've got Jet Miney here. Jet Miney is a kid out of uh, Corner Canyon High School. He actually did an interview with me on the channel here. Probably one the toughest, probably the toughest player out of ev almost any position group to decide whether to put him as deep depth or solid depth. Because one, he's a sophomore. He's been on the team a couple of years now. He he knows the system. He knows the offense. But two, I like him. I, I liked his tape a lot coming out. I really did. I enjoyed the kid. But I think we got to be realistic. The guy has seen very – I don't – know if I've seen him really hit the field yet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say deep depth. But if you're watching this jet, know that you are one of the toughest people to choose. And deep depth is not an insult. It, I, I have a ton of faith in jet. I love this tape coming out of high school. And, and I do have faith that he could be a solid depth piece um, as the year gets going. Now we got Cameron Mitchell. I'm going to be honest with you guys, not too familiar with this kid here, uh, freshman. I'm going to say deep depth, uh, not a guy you'd want to be hitting the field. Uh, so is what it is there. Brandon Bethel, uh, Brandon Bethel, number 35. Now, Brandon Bethel is a guy that I believe is friends with Tao Johnson and was the quarterback at Tao Johnson School. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, and Brandon Bethel, uh, 
he's transit he was transitioning from quarterback to wide receiver and i'm gonna put him as deep depth just because the fact that we haven't seen him at all yet tells me that he probably needs more time to develop uh so that's brandon bethel uh peyton rice uh another guy uh where redshirt freshman in the system for a year but no experience really in college football um let's just or in d1 football let's just imagine uh, that he's going to be deep depths as well. Casey Kneerum, another guy deep depth, not familiar with him. Ky- Kaimana Hanohano, though, was a guy that actually had a good amount of depth coming out. I Actually, a good amount of talent coming out, and I was excited about him. I've actually got him listed as solid depth. I, I think he was a guy that looked good coming out. I wouldn't be surprised if he looked decent in the spring game when he gets his reps and uh, you know could carve out a potential role for himself. So that's the Utah wide receiver room. Uh, exciting group, ton of talent. Uh, and let's go ahead and break it down. Okay, guys. So what a group, a, a deep group. I mean, I feel like there's, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but I think I listed 10 guys as starters, potential starters, and solid depth. Uh, so, something in that range. So really deep group of guys. So there's no bona fide stars in this group, but let's go through it real quick. Tayshawn Lyons. Dorian Singer, Munir McLean, Micah Pittman, uh, Money Parks, Luca Calderella. Now, those are the six that I have as starters or potential starters. Then we add in the solid depth, with, and the solid depth is a group that has a ton of upside too. Um, solid depth, we've got um, Daedron Zipperer, Sidney and Banasaur, David Johnson, borderline jet miney i have him as deep depth but possibly he could be decent if he sees the field and kaimana hano hano and you take that whole group and even though there's no stars now someone is going to rise like a phoenix from the ashes in this group right you are not going to see this group just lay down and not become a good group that but like I said, I don't feel confident calling any of them stars right now, but the amount of talent in this room, Utah has continued to just invest, 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 invest in wide receivers. And it this is the year where it feels like it has got to pay off. So many good players in this room. I'm expecting big things from the group, and I expect this group to kind of, you know, we've had such a tight end focus, and, and that's been the focus for this Utah team for so long that I really think this Utah wide receiver room could steal some of the thunder this year. It's a good group. I I think that's a 2000 plus yard group right there. When you put them all together, especially with cam rising under the helm, it's going to be exciting. Um, If you guys appreciate the video, make sure you guys drop it a like also comment down below. Do you agree with I had who I had as stars, you know, potential starters, solid depth, deep depth, any, any notes I'm missing on any of these guys, feel free. It took a while to dive in on all these guys. I'm not going to lie. If I skipped over someone worth talking about, I mean, I, I have everyone on the roster, but if I missed someone or you have a strong feeling about a player either being worse than I said or better than I said, I'd love to hear what you think. Also subscribe to the channel. Like I said, this content is going to be coming out a lot over the next two weeks. If you want to know every position group on the Utah team front to back, these are going to be the videos for you. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Outside of that, I am out of here and go Utes.